Hola, my name is Simon Hawk, and today I'd like to teach you about transplanting plants. I am an international farmer, cultivating my good sense in me. Transplanting 101. I've drawn some diagrams here to give you a little better understanding of how the seed grows and why transplanting is important. Uh, when you first place a seed in a small container, like one of these, the amount of available soil for the roots to grow into is quite small. So once the seed grows into a seedling, um, you would need to increase the amount of space to allow the roots to start growing as it develops into a young plant. Uh, once it's a mature plant, it's at its largest state and has the biggest root zone, so therefore you have to compensate with the size of the pot. So over time, as your seed grows, it's going to spread roots, and those roots are going to reach out to the edge of the container. As they hit the edge of the container, they're going to grow inward into what's called root bound. And the, the roots are literally bound together. Um, and it kind of stunts the growth, which is great if you're bonsaiing a plant. But if you're trying to um, raise a large plant to its full height, you would want to give it enough root zone to properly spread out. So this would be a small container, uh, a medium container like this. And then a large container, like this. Once it's reached mature state, you can put them into the soil in full sun. You can put them into your yard, and they will flourish instead of being killed. Uh, when a plant is young, it's actually quite sensitive. Uh, so the transplanting process and uh, nursing the plant to health is really important. And one of the ways we do that is by consistently transplanting it once it has outgrown its container. Today we're talking about Florida de Jamaica specifically. Um, it's a really beautiful flower and right here we have planted a whole tray of them. Uh, we've harvested the seeds from the previous plant and then put them into soil, consistently watered them, and kept them shaded really important when a plant is young not to overexpose it to light or else it gets burned um, and often the soil becomes dry and uh, it doesn't grow to its full potential. And just like a child in its early developmental stage, it's really important for them to get the right amount of nutrients, um, the right exposure to things. So when you overexpose them to sun, uh, it kind of stunts their growth, uh, makes them weaker, and doesn't allow them to fully grow their roots. Uh, right now we have these in the, the smallest possible container so that they take up the least amount of size and we have the most amount of them in a small space. So once they've outgrown this container, we're going to want to start transplanting them into something a little bit bigger. Um, so just for scale, uh, we've brought out these larger containers and we're gonna show you one of the simplest ways to transplant these is just with a spoon. So there's nothing fancy. Um, it can be from the kitchen. And all you need to do is simply reach in, pop out the seedling. You'll notice that this, we have a lot of sand, so it's kind of falling apart, but you can see the root has already started extending out, and it's probably bigger than the amount of available space. Now we're going to transplant these young seedlings from the smallest container into the next largest container. These guys have been hidden here for about two to three weeks. As you can see, they were kept in a dark place, so they actually started stretching a little bit. So we want to get them into a bigger container and move them into more light. So we're going to use a spoon 
one of the handiest gardening tools, very readily available. Uh, and you're just going to want to scoop around the seedling. One of the main things when transplanting a plant is that you don't want to disturb the root zone. So I'm going to try to scoop out all the dirt at once <clears throat> with the roots intact and keep it in a small ball. As you can see, the roots have started growing out and around, uh, not too much to the point where they're root bound. So we're going to place them into the hole that we've prepared in this soil. And we're not going to tamp down the soil. We're just going to cover it up and give it support. And that's going to be its new home. This is a slightly more mature um, seedling. Again, quite tall, it's stretching. So we're going to move it into a larger pot and give it some more sun again. Uh, we're not going to need the spoon because this is in a larger container. So one of the best ways that I do this is just flipping my hands around the root, or around the stem, and then flipping it. And here you can see a really good example of the root zone. It's actually started taking the form of the pot that it was in, which is the first stages of becoming root brown. The uh, roots are starting to close in around it. So this is uh, a great time to transplant it and give it some more room. We have a slightly larger container here than the smaller one, giving it more growth room. And we're going to take a much larger spoon, uh, a trowel, and create a hole the same size as the root zone. I'm going to take out that soil, leaving a cavity, place the new plant. Now we're going to take our transplant key, place them gently in, and replace that soil around the sides, filling in the air gaps. And now we have our second level of transplanting. For the largest pot that we have, I'm just going to show you on this pepper plant, um, which as you can see is a little bit larger, so it wouldn't exactly fit into this pot. So we're choosing a pot that's going to allow the root zone to grow and expand. We're going to make our cavity. And again, we're going to, I like to loosen the soil first a little bit, keep it to allow it to break free. And then we're going to place our hands around the stem and the base, flip it, and allowing it to come out. This one's not too root bound, as you can see, started to take the shape. But again, there's plenty of room now for the roots to expand. In your new home, we'll flip it, place it in, and then get dirty. Use our hands. You don't always have to use a tool. A lot of the times, getting soil underneath your nails and in your hands is quite satisfying and good for you. Nothing wrong. Gardening is not clean. 30. But in the end, you have a beautiful plant. And I usually like to trim at the time of transplant any excess leaves, any dead leaves, um, anything that has a growth or any pest on it. 
And you can just remove those at this point and divert that energy to spreading out your roots. Whenever you cut leaves or top a plant, it sends more energy <clears throat> out to the root zone for the plant to expand. So in the case of peppers, um, we're often topping them after we transplant. Um, topping is important because it allows for the plant to branch out. There's an apical meristem, is a scientific term for it, which is the point at the top of the plant where it stimulates new growth. Um, this is where it regenerates its arms. So whenever you cut off um, the tippy top of the plant, what will happen is it will split into two um, and cause two shoots to come out, uh, which is how you can control the growth and get a plant to turn more into a rounded bush instead of a uh, Christmas tree shape. So this plant is fully transplanted. Um, just to show you uh, a couple more examples and repeat the process for you, um, we're gonna transplant these uh, Florida Jamaica here again into just slightly larger pots. Um, another reason for transplanting pots, uh, plants into different pots would be uh, because the soil uh, has either gone really dry and no longer has any nutrients in it, um, or it's gotten too wet, like it has too much clay in it, uh, and therefore it's unsuitable for the plant. So sometimes if you see a really sad plant, or if you've had a plant for a long time, um, it may be asking to be repotted simply because uh, it needs more nutrients or the so soil is not suitable for that type of plant. So it's important to observe your plants and if you notice them wilting and, uh, and the watering is not working, you may need to simply put them into fresh soil. Um, so this soil is, is much better than this. This was a uh, potting soil with very little nutrients in it. Uh, this is native soil mixed in with compost, so it'll have a lot more nutrients in it, uh, as well as clay. Clay in the soil retains a lot of moisture. The moisture in the soil uh, then means if you forget to water it for a few days, uh, the plant will still be able to absorb the clay, uh, the moisture that is trapped in the clay. Uh, this here is on the top you'll see is very sandy soil, which is good for drainage and succulents, uh, but for retaining moisture the water comes straight through it. With a more clay-based soil, uh, the water will be retained and therefore the roots can continue drinking from it. So with this little guy, he's not pulling out right away. Sometimes they just pull right out, they're ready to go. Um, again, we're, we're just gonna squeeze the sides of it and kind of loosen it up. You'll notice the sides become much easier to pull. Uh, this grass isn't gonna do it any benefit, so we're gonna take it out. We're gonna hold by the stem, we're gonna flip it, and take a little these are actually quite nice roots um you can see they're actually kind of fuzzy and white uh, instead of stringy and dry and this is a sign of of health and um and awesome often means that the soil that was it was in uh had life uh, either fungus or mycology or um uh, enough organic nutrient for it to really stimulate healthy root development. We're going to flip it and pot it and cover it up a little bit. We've got another one down. We're going to make our cavity as wide as the transplantee's root zone. And 
test it. It doesn't want to pull out <clears throat> right away, so we're not going to force it. You really never want to pull <clears throat> a plant straight out of the ground. It can often um, rip out some of the smaller roots, which are really important. Uh, when you do this and you transplant, it's not the end, but you will notice a lot of the leaves die. Um, it, uh, it takes a hit. Um, so if you <clears throat> transplant carefully and don't disturb the root zone, um, you keep all of those capillary vessels connected. And just like the human system, uh, this is how the plant pumps water. Uh, just like we pump blood uh, through our veins, their capillaries, uh, the plant feeds itself and draws nutrients and uh, water from the soil through these veins. So you can imagine if you ripped apart the veins, they would no longer flow and, and parts of the body would die. So this is the same with the plant. Uh, if I damage this root zone, um, it will damage the growth of the plant. So we're trying to keep this intact. So no, no quick movements, no harsh movements. Uh, you're not throwing them around, you're, you're gently placing them. Um, if possible, keeping the entire structure uh, intact. Sometimes if you transplant a, a too early, uh, the root zone has not developed fully and thus it kind of falls apart. So, so transplanting at the appropriate time is important. This is um, actually specific to each plant. Each plant grows at, at different um, rates uh, and also has different size root zone. Generally, the size of the root zone is proportional to the size of the tree or the branches. Um, so with trees, you'll see they have a, a very large root zone that is proportional to their upper uh, arm span. So with a pepper plant, if this pepper plant gets to be this big, we can pretty much expect or, or will need soil that accommodates this much room for it to really fully grow. Um, so now this plant is prepared to grow proportionally at least this tall. Uh, now with bonsais and other things, you can always take a very small plant and make a bigger, uh, a bigger, a small container and make a bigger plant, but uh, there's an art to that, uh, which we can go over later in some advanced videos if you like. Um, the purpose of this video has really been to show you the basics and to help you to take um, a plant that maybe you purchased at the store and now you want to move it into a bigger container or you're noticing that it's no longer um, doing very well. The watering and the feeding um, are not promoting more growth. It might be nutrient deficient. So you want to move it to a, a bigger container with better soil. Uh, so where you get your soil is really important. Of course, you can get them from many different stores and sources. Um, as far as permaculture, we like to gather our soil from different local sources. So if you live in an area with a forest and you can collect soil from your native area, this will often um, promote the best growth in native plants. So in our sub, well, tropical, uh, climate here, uh, the soil is very conducive to local plants. Now, if I wanted to grow something that wasn't from here, I would need different soil. So it is really important what kind of soil you use. Uh, all soil is made up of a mixture of clay, sand, um, and silt, which makes into loam. So there's really um, small pieces of soil, there's large pieces of soil, and uh, those all make up different properties. So which soil you use is very dependent on what the plant needs. Uh, take for example, succulents and, and cactus don't really need a lot of water. They're from the desert. Therefore, they survive in very sandy soil. Uh, something like a, um, a fruit tree that needs to grow apples would, would need more uh, nutrient dense uh, organic material um, and clay to survive for a long time. Got two tomato plants here that are nice examples of um, transplanting. This uh, 
tomato plant was planted from seed, so it is now a seedling. And as you can see, it's still growing, so there would be no need to transplant this yet. It's too small. Um, this is a young plant, um, which has already been transplanted to a larger pot. And, uh, and for this example, we're going to transplant it into this garden bed behind me. So it's a little premature because this plant could be bigger and the root zone is probably not fully developed, um, but it's off to a good start. So it's, we're going to make it uh, when we put it out. Uh, so it's fine if we transplant it. Here we have um, a little kitchen garden. This is just where we grow vegetables for salads. Uh, we've got onion and basil, uh, tomato, and different herbs, and um, a Florida Jamaica and a marigold. Uh, so we're going to pop this tomato in. This guy we tested out in the soil. He's doing quite well. So we're just going to add in some more tomato plants, give him some friends. Um, just finding. Um, a place where this soil has room for this plant is right, right here. We're going to make our cavity again the same size as the container that we're putting in. I'm going to stabilize the soil with my fingers and flip it. It's actually developed some quite nice roots. Um, these are very white. There's some hairs on them, which is a sign of health. Um, they have not yet taken the full form of the container, so they're not root bound, but they are very healthy. So we expect this plant to do well. Carefully placing it in and covering it up with soil to stabilize it. You'll notice that there's a lot of grass clippings on top of this garden. Uh, this is just natural mulch. Um, uh, we don't need to fertilize as often or water as often if we keep the soil covered with organic matter that breaks down and then feeds the plant. So we actually get these grass clippings brought to us by neighbors who cut their lawn and don't use pesticides. So they come to us, we compost them and let them dry out, which is really important to get rid of the seed inside the grass. We don't want this to turn into a lawn. We want to keep it a uh, a garden, so we're going to compost, heat up this, uh, the grass clipping, and then spread them out over the top of the soil. And if you'll notice underneath here, the soil is quite moist because it's not getting hit by the sun. Patches like this over here are going to dry out a lot faster. So I'm going to take grass clippings, cover this soil. Is just a nice natural mulching. Ta -da. This is a really incredible book that has taught me an immense amount about uh, organic farming. It comes from Korea, from the author Young Sang Cho, called Master Cho. Uh, it's called Ja Dam, J A D A M, Organic Farming. And it's the way to ultra low cost agriculture. Um, amazing examples of what they do on the farm to create all of their own inputs, um, how they harvest mycology uh, and natural resources to grow nutrient dense food. This is uh, an incredible book, uh, very important to my understanding of soil health and how to uh, apply permaculture in a more uh, scalable way for commercial farming. This book is just called Organic Farming, How to Raise, Certify, and Market Organic Crops and Livestock. Uh, it's a much simpler book. Um, it really uh, explains basic farming in, in America, specifically in the uh, Northern America, United States. Um, Lots of pictures and examples of, of simple ways to grow plants and then sell them at a market. Very nice book. And this is the Introduction to Permaculture by Bill Mollison. Um, 
a really, really deep uh, analysis of creating a permaculture farm and using um, natural resources and elements that you can find anywhere instead of buying things really explains about the, the soil usage and uh, is uh, an extremely helpful resource. So Introduction to Permaculture by Bill Mollison. Um, these are all great books you can order on Amazon. Um, I really hope that you do continue learning. I've, I've learned a lot from books and from mentors, but um, the books stay around and you can constantly reference them. So it's really important to start building a library both for yourself and to pass on to other people. So I hope that you purchase and read more books. I'm going to do some more transplanting for you just to give you more examples of how to do the process with different plants. Um, we're going to be transplanting some mango trees that we've grown from seed and they've far outgrown their container and the soil is no longer good. So they really need to be transplanted into uh, better soil in a larger pot. So here we have our sad mango tree, which um, you can see has become completely root bound and uh, the soil is not staying together. So there's not a lot of clay um, or organic material left in it to create a healthy, stable soil. So we're going to be putting it into this larger pot. Um, which is much denser soil that includes some local native soil and clay, uh, as well as grass. So a lot of organic material to feed this plant over the long term. Um, so we're going to create our cavity. We're going to excavate any rocks or anything that it's not conducive to growth. Since this is organic soil, it comes with some extra plant um, that will root and turn into a weed, so get rid of that. Facing the plant to the side and covering it with extra soil. You really want to make sure that you have enough soil to keep the plant upright and uh, basically cover the root zone by uh, a layer of soil. I'm just going to move the root zone up and as you can see we're going from um, a container that's small to something much larger giving it room for the roots to grow. This one is done. Here we have a uh, guanabana tree. Uh, this one's doing a little bit better. We uh, had added some soil to it so I can already feel it is moist. Um, so I'm not expecting it to be as dried out. So I'm going to use my hands again uh, around the, the stem of the plant. I'm going to upturn it. And you can kind of see here these roots. You always want to look at the roots as we transplant to get an understanding of where the plant is at and what it's going to need. Um, so what I'm seeing right now is uh, some decay on these roots caused by um, excess moisture. So that's just something to be aware of um, that if this plant was maybe over watered or in an area where it wasn't drying out. So we're just going to make sure that where we place it next has proper sunlight, it's not over watered, and we're just going to watch the soil to make sure that it reacts and roots well. We're placing it in gently, not tamping down the soil. 
and then we're going to cover it with a layer of nutrient-rich soil. And that one is done. Now I wanted to show you guys the difference between a plant that's healthy. This was successfully transplanted from a small air container uh, and then it was fed compost. And we're allowing these crops or greens to grow on top um, to ensure that this has a lot of life at the surface. One thing you'll notice at commercial greenhouses is when you buy a store is that there's only one plant per pot, and um, that's technically a, a monoculture, just one plant per soil. So this is basically a microcosm of polyculture, which is um, multiple plants within one soil. So one theory with permaculture is that these plants all create a symbiotic relationship and uh, they all take and give different things to the soil and they promote different life. Um, so you can see that this plant is really happy. Um, the leaves are almost a waxy color. There are multiple shoots. There is not a lot of decay. Um, I would imagine if we took a look at these roots that the, they would be quite nice. So for the sake of showing you, um, we're going to take a look at what a healthy root system looks like. As you can see, it's not yet fully root bound. We're seeing nice white roots um, and it's completely holding its form. So the roots are actually quite strong. Soil still has nutrient, uh, still is retaining moisture. And it goes right back in. This is a very happy plant. Probably won't need to be transplanted um, for another couple weeks. Some lemongrass that was brought to us by uh, a friend. So it's a great example of a plant that you might pick up at a store. Lemongrass is really excellent for making tea. It's literally grass that tastes and smells like lemon. It has a citrus scent to it. So um, we're going to transplant this into a bigger pot here, give it more room to grow. So it branches out. I'm going to flip it. We can see here that this plant has been really well watered and the roots are nice and long. It has not yet become root bound. And we're just going to flip it. Gently. and then cover it with soil. Now this lemongrass roots have this entire zone to grow out into, and this plant can then get as large as its roots allow. If you like avocado, this is what an avocado tree looks like. When it is a young plant, um, it's almost mature uh, and ready to go out, but we're trying to put it into this container so that we can move it around a little easier. Um, if you take a look at these leaves, they are browning, a little bit burnt. Um, it's, it's a little droopy. I would imagine that the roots might not be super healthy or it's, it's pretty dried out. So maybe the soil ran out of nutrient or didn't have enough clay in it for this to really blossom. So let's take a look at the roots. So we're seeing that it is root bound, fully taken the form of the container. It's not bad. It is quite dry. So I imagine that this soil is a little sandy. Um, uh, we did try to add a layer of compost here, um, but ultimately the roots below 
need room to grow and, and soil to grow into. So we're providing that here with this bigger, bigger container. And this is filled with a very nice mixture of sand, clay, and organic material. So it's got a lot of nutrients. It's going to hold water. You're seeing me clench this soil. This is the easiest test to find out how much clay you have in your soil. If it doesn't clump together, there's no clay. So this is clumping together nicely, but also has a fair amount of sand. So I know that this is both going to drain well and also retain moisture over the long term. So probably a good mixture for this plant that is responding negatively to not having enough moisture. And because these leaves are dying, um, we're just going to take them off. They're probably depleting energy from this plant. So as we transplant, we're pruning and getting rid of anything that's dying or inefficient. One really interesting way to think about the leaves of a plant are like solar panels. They each receive energy and then transmit it down to the plant. When a solar panel is broken or damaged, it, uh, it lets in less light uh, and takes in less nutrients and therefore is less efficient at doing what it is supposed to do. So by trimming it, you divert that energy to the plant growing a new leaf, which is much more efficient and healthier. So by pruning this plant, it is going to redirect energy to better shoots. Um, also, you notice that this plant is one straight line. This is because this plant has never been topped. Uh, when you top a plant, you cut off the very top growth. This is where the apical meristem exists. And this uh, is an area where new growth forms. So by cutting this off at the top, we will create two new branches. And then this will become a bigger tree. So in the transplanting, we're pruning, we're topping, and it's really hot. OK. One of the coolest things about organic farming is the life that it supports. Uh, so when you stop using chemicals and you start creating life in your garden, you'll start to find little unexpected visitors like that frog. Um, frogs are a great sign that you are providing a really healthy environment and uh, it's a good, good, good sign overall because uh, these guys feel comfortable. The frogs eat some of the bugs and they add things to the soil. Um, so as you can see behind me, we've been working on this garden and there's a lot of life developing. Um, what we're doing on the side here is creating shade plants. These are papayas and they're going to create shade for all of these Florida Jamaica. These Florida Jamaica we showed you in the beginning of the course was the uh, very small plant. This is a mature plant that now has been transplanted uh, into full sun and uh, we expect to grow to full height. Um, right now I'm going to show you transplanting directly into the soil. Uh, this plant this is a pepper plant, and um, by the look of the leaves, uh, they're very dark and green, so there's plenty of nutrient and nitrogen. However, it, it is quite sad. Um, I'm imagining that this is because the soil is very dry, um, or uh, it is too much sand, probably. So let's take a look and see what's under there. We're going to flip it. Woo! Very root bound. So fully taking the form of the container. Um, healthy roots though. Uh, you're seeing a lot of sand though. Uh, so the sand is probably the root of the problem because it's not retaining moisture. So 
what we're putting it into has a lot of clay, so we would expect that this would perk up. Um, we're going to transplant it now. Now we've created a cavity for the plant to go. We're going to gently place it in. And then we're going to cover the sides. And one thing that we haven't been covering that we always do uh, when we are transplanting is water these in. So they're changing environment and the roots are being exposed for a little bit and then they're coming in contact with a new new soil so it's, it's important to give them water to allow those roots to grow they go through a little bit of shock especially when you transplant them at high sun it is usually better to transplant in the early morning or in the late afternoon because the sun has gone down, they won't be stressed out as much. But for the purpose of this video and the light, we just wanted to show you how to do this process. So again, transplanting is best done in the morning or the afternoon. Um, it's cooler time often, and uh, the plant is going to bounce back a little quicker. Another thing that we can do when we're transplanting and we see weak leaves is, is prune. So these, these leaves are, are sucking up energy and uh, we want to send that energy to the roots. So maybe we'll just take off a couple leaves and we'll see how it does in a couple days. Thanks for joining me in the garden. Um, really want to encourage you to have a garden of your own. For me, the act of gardening and having a place to go to center my thoughts has been really balancing for both my uh, mental and physical health. The act of putting your hands in the soil is really wonderful and raising a plant from seed to seedling and then watching it bear fruit is a really excellent thing to focus on day to day. So just really want to encourage you to keep planting seeds. The more practice you get, uh, the better you will become at it. Grow more trees and spend more time in the garden. We'll be releasing some advanced courses and longer videos on um, gardening and growing your own food. So if you like this, make sure to subscribe and follow and keep an eye out for the next videos.